G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a bloodied combat shotgun, just of one stars. Yes, we all know what this thing would be good with, don't lose your pants. But we're going to be using this as a sort of a stealth shotgunner build. So you might notice that I've got a big shush tube on the front, and I'm going to be using that to the best of my ability. And I'm going to be doing the basic sort of thing, lowering my health to the um, nerd rage threshold, getting a whole lot more agility from the unyielding bits that I wear as armor, and hopefully that means I can swap out sneak for covert operative, so we get a little bit more damage from our sneak attack criticals, which I int intend to use as much as I possibly can. So we'll just start off here by adding some shotgunner perks, which are located down here. Of course, scatter shot will go, and I think I miss expert shotgunner down here. There it is. And of course, bloody mess, we can give ourselves ever so slightly more damage. Nerd Rage, Gunsmith, and Skeet Shooter, obviously, are a couple of other perks. Of course, Enforcer is going to be useful a little bit later on. But just 206 damage, no adrenal reaction, no bloodied, no anything. Just the base damage with this thing with all of those shotgunner perks and bloody mess. Pretty good. Alright, so take note of the health bar there. All the bloodied things are in effect. And 639 damage, which is... Pretty damn good. I think we saw that before with an explosive combat shotgun, but this one isn't explosive, so, you know, we'll actually get some armor-piercing benefits out of it. Oh my god. Yeah, gulpers do this when you hit them with Enforcer. Oh yeah, once we're getting close with those uh, good sneak attack criticals, then we can really kick some ass. Alright, let's get into it. Okay, so here are my buffs, and here are my armor bits. Let's get started. Now, I've noticed there's a legendary warlord here, but he had, like, a bunch of baby super mutants, so maybe it's, like, take your son to work day. You'll probably see them in a second. See, look at that baby-ass super mutant. Yeah, of course we're going to one-shot him. If we can't wreck level 5 super mutants, then what's the bloody point? Yep, I'll definitely pinch that. That'd be good for, uh, those legendary scripts, scribs, something. Wait a second, is it giving me a bunch of baby super mutants on purpose? Is... Pod oh wait, no, there we go. We're on now. Okay, cool. And we can basically one-shot everyone. Um, at range, though, we're going to have to creep in a little bit. That is why I didn't want to put on um, Marathoner, because most of the time I'm going to be creeping around anyway, so I'd rather keep the action points, you know, for that shooting. And that should be six killed so far. Damage at 60%. Weapon doing 871. Ooh, it's almost 870. Like a Remington 870. That's kind of cool. So it appears that it is take your sons to work today, because there's too many baby super mutants walking around here, which is very disappointing, it's very anticlimactic. Oh yeah, man, our weapon's OP, we can one-shot level 5 super mutants, like no one's business. Let's not get killed by them, though, that'd be more of a problem. Okay, that sucked. Let's just get inside and shoot some more super mutants, shall we? It appears that I think um, unyielding in a bloodied build kind of, you know, wipes the need for sneaking at all, or the sneak perk, so that's a few extra points in my agility tree when I go back and do some more melee weapons. Although, I don't have to get quite so close with these guys. I've got a little bit more range than a melee weapon, so maybe, just for shotgunner's sake, stealth shotgunning, I can forget about um, doing... I can forget about chucking on sneak. I think having a bit of extra sneak attack critical bonus is better. Thank you, escape artist. See, that synergize as well, doesn't it? I can go back into sneaking whenever I want. Although, maybe I'm a bit wrong about that, but I do like the offensive bonus of having, like, the offensive, not I'm triggering people, of, uh... <laughs> oh, just kidding, super mutants aren't people, but, um the attacking bonus there, I'll put it like that, of the uh, extra 3.3 uh, of the sneak attack critical, because especially when you're hitting as hard as, what, 870, um, that's when you really start to take off with the sneak attack criticals, so I think it is well worth it to have a little bit of covert operative sometimes, especially if you're stealth shotgunning. Maybe if you were to shuffle um, out Enforcer, and because, honestly, we don't have to worry about crippling these guys because they're grounded anyway, so we can probably chuck on something like Mr. Sandman during the night to boost that even more. I know I've got a rank of something else uh, in agility that I don't, well, that I sh probably don't really need. Do I have gun food? We'll check. 
I don't really know. Also, they made the same death sound, which is fucking hilarious, to be honest. I love it when that happens. But regardless, we'll keep on going. Just one shot at legendary three-star, and he's got a laser gun. Instigating? What are you trying to put on me? It better be, like, explosive, even though that's, like, impossible to drop. <laughs> regardless, we'll keep on moving. Now, I do have a perforating magazine, which, um, as you can tell, only holds eight. I would recommend the stinging magazine for anything explosive, or maybe the drum magazine, because, you know, the, the fucking armor penetrating bonuses don't really work all that well. But perforating magazine, you get more armor penetration for only two less shells in the magazine, so honestly, it is worth it having um, the perforating magazine if you intend to use this, you know, without explosions. So it's been a pretty cruisy run so far. We've only been open fire on once, saying that. Never mind, we can just simulate a tea bag, even though playing as a woman, it's something else entirely. And then we're back into caution, so yep. Escape artist doing some good work. Can't believe people still don't rate that perk. I've ranted about this, but I won't go off on a tangent again about that nonsense. Can't believe it. What's wrong with you people? Oh yeah, looks like I've stirred up the hornet's nest now, but I really don't need the sneak attack criticals, don't I? I can probably just survive this, you know, as long as I actually get the hits in before they reach me. Oh no, the poor hammer guys when I've got a shotgun. Oh, I saw that too. You know what, that's still too many super mutants I'd rather not get shot at, to be honest, because I lack like it or not. Like, sure I can kill these guys easily enough, but if any of them have any sorts of automatic rifles at all, like, I'm lucky that guy didn't, but if he did, he would have friggin' cleaned me up just then. Also, watch the health bar sometimes, I'll lose health and I'll just warp back up because of grit. I'm like Axton from Borderlands 2, just resisting death. It's like health gating. That'd be fun. Anyways, so, uh, yep, that was our bloodied combat shotgun in, in Gunner's, in Mutie's Plaza, actually. Can't believe people don't rate the regular bloodied stuff, it's heaps good, man. Now, when it comes to ghoulies and bloody builds, uh, they pose a little bit of a problem to you because obviously they hit you and you get some rads and uh, if you look at my health bar once again, you'll notice that there's enough rads on there as is. So uh, making sure we do this as stealthy as possible uh, will go a long way in making us survive this whole encounter. Um, so normally they wouldn't mix like, under normal circumstances, especially not with melee weapons, but shotgun is only one level above that in terms of how dangerous they are to use, because you have to be up close and personal. So, you know, that's why I highly recommend doing stealth shotgunning, because me and stealth love each other. We've made lots of little babies. The baby I made was winter, would you? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying, but it's good. Like, I have a particular affinity for stealth, and I will always recommend using it in any situation, because there's no real reason not to. Sure, you move a bit slower, that's like the only drawback. But what do you get? More damage, less hits on you, more survivability, you see. And, uh, these ghouls are already dead. That's very, very unsatisfying. I don't like it when randos rock up and kill the ghouls, but, uh, basically, if they were alive down there, I'd be doing the exact same thing as I'm doing now, just stealth shotgunning them whilst they're having their little sleepy buys. Where's the boss in this area, by the way? I don't really know. Also, I'm collecting chems, because I'm going to get myself hooked on some of those, so I can actually show off the potential that the, uh, that junky switchblade with the swing speed that you get from the, uh, the thing. Oh, okay, there's another ghoul there. Looks like whoever cleared out these bastards forgot to clean up that one. Alright, so I think you get the point. Even if we were in a situation where they were all running at me through the choke point, yeah, I'd have those eight rounds, but then I'd just hop over the fence and, you know, activate escape artists and they'd be none the wiser to where I am because they're dumb zombies. So, yep, not even picking up a disease there. Nice. I don't like how rats never give up. Anyway, so it looks like we're going to be taking on, um, little baby swan, because they're only level 50, with, uh, some adrenaline, so we'll see how that works. He just screams all the time, even though he had no right to scream there. You were dead before you even got up. Okay, yep. We're one of the crabs, I guess. Case closed on swan. 
Now the main problems with using a shotgun that isn't explosive is it robs you of so much range because obviously you're not throwing a bunch of explosions to do damage, you have to rely on the pellets which are... Their damage at range isn't all that spectacular. We're hitting the, um, that crab in the soft bit so that doesn't really matter. Uh, that... Yeah, but look at that. Over range there as... Was that a T-pose? I saw that T-pose. How dare you try to assert dominance on me. Also, he still sneezes his sonic attacks at me even while crippled. That's something that I probably should have known, but whatever. Alright, we've got another one down there. There's the king, so we have to get in nice and close and one-shot him right in the noggin. And of course, you can go down. See, even now I'm pushing this thing's range entirely, and obviously a suppressor is going to reduce that even more, so being in very close quarters is definitely what you have to be, so it could be problematic in PvP against melee players, I guess, but who even fucking cares about PvP? It's broke as fuck. I see that, Radroach. I'm gonna kick your ass. You just wait. We can one-shot a Radroach with this, and we can use this thing against a Scorched Beast Queen. Well, he survived, so... At least that's the most powerful enemy taken down today. And Queen, please. See, at this range, we're basically tickling her. What we can make her do is fall on her ass. <laughs> Cop that, mate. And instead of taking all these rads from being in the water, I'm just gonna bunny hop until you're dead. Easy as that. Alright, I guess we didn't learn much except this thing does a lot of damage and we've actually made some use out of Enforcer there, which was good. So I'm gonna use that more on a bat. Alrighty, Scorch Beast spotted over there, and all we need to do is hit him in the wings a little bit. Doesn't matter how hard we hit him, as long as we get him in the wings and it procs a random cripple, he'll go to the ground and we can get nice and close. Here he goes, actually. Excellent, we did that very, very quickly. Unfortunately, he's kind of landed over there, so what I'll actually do is try to cripple his legs so he stops moving so quick, and then we can open up to him. Ah, perfect. Yeah, use that thing in back a little bit works pretty well. And you are dead, and once again, taking a look at that damage, 895, so it's gone up. I guess um, I've got the next threshold of bloodied and uh, unyielding or adrenal reaction there. Something's happened, and I'm doing a whole lot more damage than I was before. And on that note, I think that's about it for the bloodied combat shotgun. I think you get the point. If you'd like to see this thing in your game, A, better get farming, or B, set, uh, find w what it is, or find it on Market76. And obviously, if you want to farm these, you got to go to the locations that I've shown in the video. There's Mudie's Plaza, there's White Springs, and uh, here are the crabs, and here's the Scorch Bees I usually fight. I usually fight it up there too because there's buddy no one else there. Keep in mind that all of these drops are RNG, it's all random number generators, so if you don't get it, you've just got bad luck. Don't come crying to me about it. Thank you for watching, guys.